Hello everyone, my name is Rob Francis and I'm one of the lecturers in creative and professional writing at the University of Wolverhampton uh, and currently the poet in residence for the Black Country Geological Society um, which is a, a position that has been enabled by the university's early research award scheme and I've been tasked with writing work that's inspired by and set in the Black Country UNESCO Global Geopark and all the different wonderful sites of geological and industrial heritage around the region. And part of this project was uh, me commissioning four other writers to produce poems and blog pieces and have a little conversation with me about their experiences in some of the uh, geoparks as well. So a couple of weeks ago, we had our first blog post and poem from the Wolverhampton City Poet Laureate, Emma Pursehouse. A couple of weeks ago, we had the second poem and blog post from my guest today, the very awesome Lee Armstrong. How are you, Lee? I'm all right, Rob, yourself? Really good, thanks. Really good. Enjoying the sunny weather for a change and uh, excited to carry on these geopoetic uh, explorations. How did yours go? Really well, to be honest. I uh, really enjoyed it. Um, probably a little bit difficult to write about the area I wrote about because there's so much to write about and it's knowing what to or deciding what to keep in and what to kind of throw away, because I could have li literally uh, written page after page about the uh, the place that I, I chose to write about. So that was the, the only difficult thing. I mean, usually you'd think, well, you know, the more you've got to write about, the better it is, but it was really difficult here to kind of narrow it down and, and pick a track and just stick to it, really. Yeah, that's it. Um, and I think there are a number of the geo sites that are a bit like that, that have almost got too much in the soil definitely uh, properly investigate in a short piece um you know I, th I think about that in terms of the renner and, and places like salt wells as well where there's just so much but uh the site that you investigated also kind of connects to lots of different other sites as well doesn't it so you can nip over into a slightly different part of the geo park all within one place and you've got lots of different topography all within one space as well haven't you so could you tell everyone where it was that you went and so then was, maybe tell us a little bit about that landscape yeah so it was the um the bumble hole uh in netherton uh which is a, a a nature reserve and and it's a strange thing really because a lot of people will know it straight away and you mentioned the bumble hole and they're like that's a fantastic place but there's people who live quite local to the area who were just you mentioned the name and there's like a little bit of a smirk perhaps at the you know the name itself and they're like you know what is this but um it, it's basically uh you've got like the in, industrial kind of infrastructure um from a few centuries back in the industrial revolution uh and nature's been allowed to kind of cultivate it of course but allowed to um grow around that that infrastructure and turned it into a nature reserve and it's that i've put in the, the the blog that kind of sweet sweet spot meld of nature and uh and industry that's just irresistible really yeah i think so too um it, it's a particularly impressive place in the the variety that's there as well i mean i know you mentioned that uh you've got that sort of mix of lush nature and industrial heritage but there's also all sorts of going on in terms of its geology as well and, and the way that the geology connects with the industry um but uh you know bumble hole and, and warren's hall you've got sort of wetlands and grasslands and old clay pits and uh spoil heat spoiling yeah yeah now all within a kind of couple of mile square and and that's one of the things I've tried to get across in uh, in in the blog and the, the poem that kind of you know the devil's in the details really in places like this and it's it's looking beyond that kind of picturesque thing that you see or you you know you first see when you 
enter a site like that and I suppose you know digging below the surface uh, a little bit and looking what's there and and that's what I've tried to get across like I say in the poem and the, uh, in, the in the blog. Absolutely and how did you find the process of digging down how did that how did that work out for you creatively? Uh, I, I thought it was good to be honest I mean it's a it's an area I'm quite familiar with anyway and what I've noticed over the well since since COVID and the, the pandemic and whatever else, is uh, a, a lot of my friends have been going over, the, you know, areas like this. Mm. You see these pictures appear on um, Facebook and social media. And what's happened is you, you'll see like a, a general picture of the area. And then the more people go to like places like the Bumble Hole, there's like a more detailed pic. And then there's a, a picture and then there's, you know, they, they're kind of, digging and investigating themselves and it makes you think I've got up my game here because you know you're kind of looking for the details on the details because yeah that's what people everybody else is doing and it's it's wonderful to see you know you'll get just a I don't know like a a, a landscape shot but then people have taken pictures and posted them on Facebook and I'm kind of thinking where's that on the bumble because I, I don't even recognize that place and I thought I was really familiar with it and I love that to be honest that's fantastic yeah, that's it. I mean, there's these places. I mean, the Bumble Hole is a really nice example of it as well. I mean, I I used to live on the Sledmere estate. Yeah. So Bumble Hole yeah. pretty well myself. Um, and uh, I take the dog for walks around there quite a lot. But I think one of the one of the other things that these geo sites have got in common, I think, is that there's well, I mean, it, there's layers and layers and layers of stuff there to go and investigate but there's also this sense that they're they're always changing and always morphing into something else and that doesn't matter how many times you've been there there's always something new to discover there like i covered almost every inch of the wren's nest over and because i was right on on the you know it was within the stone's throw of me me house um but even going back relatively recently, I've, I've spotted things that I didn't see before. Um, yeah. And yeah, there's, you know, coming at things from different angles can really help your association with the place as well, can't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And uh, I mean, we've had quite a, um, a loose deadline in terms of writing this poem and 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 that was a it sounds like i'm having a moment about writing the poem but that was another issue really because what you see in january is not what you're going to see in the the you know the middle of summer or the height of summer yeah. so you, you, you kind of look and you think well where have all these snowdrops gone and now you've got like you know cow parsley and hawthorn and things like that and you think i'm gonna have to change that and so you, you, you don't have to really i mean somebody who knows the area would be able to look at that and think well yeah, you've got this kind of fauna at this time and, you know, these trees and these plants and things like that. But for me, every time I went, because I go there quite a lot, I'll ride through there. Um, and every time I went through, I noticed something else or something had changed. And, you think, and so the, the poems kind of changed. Now, I, I was going to say to you, really, I mean, if I get through it without fluffing a line, then it'll be a miracle because I've gone off on different tracks previously. You, do you know what I mean? And it's changed. Yeah. So much over the last, uh, the last, even the last couple of weeks, really. Yeah, I mean that must do something quite interesting to the creative process itself, doesn't it? Because you, you know, you, you might start off with a with an idea of, oh, well, this is this is the point of departure. This is what this is what my poem is going to be about, or at least these are the loose kind of frames that I'm going to be looking into. Um, and then, just as much as the place changes and offers new perspectives and new things every time you return. The poem itself is morphing and changing yeah. and what as well. And that seems to be in keeping with that kind of geopoetic tradition that, you know, what, what I've been trying to do for the last 12 months really is to sort of ground the black country culture in its geology. Yeah. Um, and and in its in its land in its in the physicality of its place. Yeah. To be grounded literally and, and metaphorically. Um of course, that's quite a, an impossible task in itself because you're asking to be grounded in something that's always evolving and changing and morphing and in a state of upheaval as well. And so it's natural that the creative process should take that as well. 
yeah, that, that, that groundedness for me is, um, it is just being vague. You, you know, if you, if you say about the black country that there's this, um, this vagueness about it, and that's as far down as you can kind of get in some respect. Do you know what I mean? And like you say, this ever morphing and evolving kind of uh, landscape. Um, and, and that's as, as kind of grounded as sometimes you can get it. And it's often yeah. some, some, sometimes to say, yeah, it is a kind of vague, almost indescribable region as much as you want to describe it. And, and I think if you throw things at it, you know, the kind of history and the geology and the topography, everything like that, sometimes something will stick and you think, yeah, that's that's the black country. Yeah, yeah. Shit. You know, and you think, we're not you quite sure know. what it is. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 Or how yeah. you've done that, but it, you think, yeah, I've kind of, you know, I've uh, described the black country there. I don't know, or, you know, if we could bottle it, it would be fantastic, but um, you yeah, can't import it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just listening to you talk there kind of reminds me a little of what uh, Kerry Hadley Price says and talks about in her work about the black country as well as it's it's almost a state of mind or an imagined kind of uh, psychic location as much yeah. as it is in that place. Um, and of course, someone like Natalie Burdett, another really great writer, does does similar things in her work with her sort of remapping of the West Midlands as well. Yeah. So, so I mean, yeah, it, I mean, I spend a lot of time uh, on the canals themselves and with the canals, you haven't got those borders or those boundaries, you know, there's, it's, it, there's no, uh, there are like um, signposts telling you which direction you're going in the kind of thing, but you don't get that, that notion that all of a sudden you're in Coesley or all of a sudden you're in Netherton or it's a yeah. kind of gradual, you know, drift, and and then you suddenly realise, oh, I'm in Craigie East at the moment, but you, you don't actually know that point where you've crossed into that area, if that makes sense, as if you would if you're on the roads or yeah, you know, walking on the pavements or whatever else. So I think that feeds into it as well. Yeah, I think so, and that, that that's a definite. Well, it's a sort of quintessentially black country geography and a quintessentially black country state of being as well. Really, yeah. I mean, I've been doing a lot of thinking about where I grew up, um, which is Stamber Mill. And no one no one ever calls it Stamber Mill anymore. In fact, the only the only people that do are the people that lived there like 20 or 30 years ago. Um, but it's right next to Stamber Mill Viaduct is where I grew up, which yeah. is somewhere in between the Lye and Stourbridge. So it's this like non-place that's not really a proper town that's, that's between two other not proper towns, well, Stourbridge is probably a town, yeah. but uh, you, and, and again, it's this really weird location of lush flora and fauna and in industry and housing estates that are all kind of combined into this really weird genius loci. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's uh, similar to the Bumblebee. I mean, it's like the, there are basically two nature reserves there, you, you know, uh, adjacent to each other. But for me, that's just the Bumble Hole, and that's how I refer to it in the. The kind of piece, and to a lot of people who you you speak to, they make no distinction between the two um, the two nature reserves. So the, the, yeah, the two things bleed into each other. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the, there's a, a, a funny leaflet. Oh, I say funny leaflet, but I think it's uh, from Dudley Council. Um, and if you look at the leaflet in the the small print, it, it gives like a description of the different parts of uh, the bumblebee that sitting. Sandwell and sitting Dudley and I think yeah. that all the, a, a kind of war between the two boroughs you know you're going to have these cordoned off areas on the but it, it's like you say it just bleeds into each other but in the small print the royalties belong to Sandwell or to, to Dudley and I think that's quite a funny thing really. Yeah yeah so there's messy borders within messy borders Border, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, the other thing that I've, I've found in, in my explorations around the different geo sites is something that the the scottish writer kenneth white talks about as uh, a topological presence as a sort of an awareness of self within location yeah the state of awe almost kind of being awe stricken in that sort of romantic tradition or yeah. gothic tradition. and i think that that lends itself or, or comes about more so with that sort of deep time geological focus uh, or method 
or observation as well that we're we're aware of our our deep deep connections with the earth but also of our complete insignificance and that's something that emma purse has picked up on when she was investigating uh uh her her geo site as well it, are there any shared uh experiences for you on that front as well yeah i think they are a logical thing <laughs> Yeah, especially, I mean, the, the, the poem that I've written, really, I, the, the characters are um, time and, and clearly landscape, but time as well. And I've kind of dipped my toe into the deep time aspect because there is this almost sublime kind of thing about it. You know, if you think about it too much, it, you know, it's, uh, I wouldn't say depressing really, but it, it has a strange effect on you, to be honest. And you yeah, can be both joyful and terrifying. But yeah, that's yeah. a that's sublime romantic kind of, you know, tradition or, or concept. But, um, so I've dipped my toe in it a little bit and, but try to, to keep that, um, tied in with everything else and that people can actually, you know, can actually see when they visit the, the site as well. And, uh, especially like, look, looking at things like, uh, Netherton Tunnel, and you know that you've got the the calcite or the limestone deposits coming through yeah. the tunnel, and that's where you can actually physically see that you know the two different things, like you know a kind of deep time and uh, a present and a past, all bleeding into literally, you know, and metaphorically like bleeding, yeah, rippling one. into each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, and you know, and, and where else could you see that? To be honest, it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it really is. Well, that seems to me like a, a perfect opportune moment for us to hear your poem then, Lee. So, so please give us your bumble hole poem. Uh, this is called The Bumble Hole. Smoke still pours from the stack if you've the eyes for it. There's a hiss of steam and a seething underfoot. The taste on the air changes with the breeze, grease, Sweat, soot, this is everything and nothing, the only song we've ever known. Dig the scene that separates Dolaroid Hills from Derby End, rarely rag and the spit polished rows of post-war utopia, where the scrape back landscape reinvents itself, forging new links and strange acquaintances, tuned in to the heavy metal reverb of buried lives and sunken trades, chainmaker and nailer, Colliery and boat yard, where spoil heaps rub shoulders with silver shafted birch and hawthorn sparks show a blue collared walls. This is a space where time clocks off, unwinds, goes wild, finds itself, thin placed and hard pressed, caught in the in between. Pick at the seam of picture postcard vistas sitting pretty in their off kilter kingdoms, a cast of bridges still reflecting on the old ways. Crisscrossing epochs, straddling gowns, ambered in the glass bottle brown of the cut, while walkers and riders float like ghosts on pitted fields and firecraft pathways, cow, desire, barely theirs. This is where time gets deep, ponders its past in death knell bell pits, tunnels its secrets in calcite scrolls, age seeping into age where the bones of the lung departed are sketched in bedrock pages. A smokeless stack abides if you've the eyes for it, the whisper of trees and seedlings underfoot, the ring of industry still carried on the breeze, magpie, blackbird, coot. This is nothing and everything, the only song we've ever known. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much. Um, that was brilliant. I really love that poem, and thanks for your, your your blog as well, which is a really, really beautiful, well, deep dive into into the location, isn't it? Um, so, uh, for all of you guys listening, please uh, go to the Chain Coral Chorus blog. If you put the Chain Coral Chorus into an internet search, it'll come up, and uh, have a have a really nice read of uh, some beautiful writing and a beautiful poem about the bumble hole, which again is this glorious, haunting, eerie, and joyous location that's right on our doorstep, it's right on the edge of our everydays. So Lee, uh, tell everybody where we can find you if uh, we want to find more information about what you're up to. 
Uh, tw Twitter's probably the um, the, the the best. Uh, uh, Lee Armstrong uh, seventy four. So on uh, Twitter, you'll find me on there. Uh, I'm on Facebook. A lot of my friends, you know, I post things on there, and people uh, follow as well. So uh, I'm always, you know, any any new friends out there, or you know, I'm always happy to oblige. And uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but Twitter's probably the best place. So I will share a few tidbits and nuggets as I'm travelling around. Lovely. Thanks for, very much for your time, Lee. Really appreciate your words and your work as ever. And uh, I hope we get to see each other properly soon. I'm sure we will, yeah. Cheers, Rob. Thanks, everyone. Take everyone. care, mate. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. See ya. Thanks, Rob. Right, that's us stopped. Nice. Nice.